Voiceovers. Some filmmakers love them, some truly hate it. To improve myself as a screenplay writer, I should learn how to write good voiceovers. A film that I remember that have great voiceovers is Chunking Express. So why not just learn from the best filmmaker from Hong Kong, which is Wong Kar Wai. Like anybody, Wong Kar Wai also had to learn to write voiceovers, as clearly missing from his first two films as Tears Goes By and Days of Being Wild. Even though Chunking Express came out as the third film, the third film Wong Kar Wai actually produced is Ashes of Time, where you can notice he experimented with voiceovers. That is why I want to talk about Chunking Express where Wong Kar Wai made significant improvements which we can learn from. There are three types of voiceovers. You have narration which is presenting information and retelling a moment, internal monologue which is the thought of the character in the moment, and you have off-screen monologue or dialogue which you hear either one or two characters talking without seeing them. What impresses me is that some of the voiceovers in Chunking Express are hard to distinguish if it's either an internal monologue or a narration as it blends the line between both. In Chunking Express opening scene, Cop 223 played by Kenashiro Takeshi brushes a woman with a wig played by Bridget Lin. This was the closest we've ever got just 0.01 centimeters between us. But 57 hours later, I fell in love with this woman. What's great about this narration is that it relates to what's happening on screen and romanticizes the moment that they pass each other. Even though it does spoil what will happen, it is more of a teaser which will set the audience up to be curious about how they would fall in love and also get thrown into the loop when the film reveals that the woman is a drug smuggler. Next scene is where the voiceover romanticizes the act of buying an almost expired can of pineapples. We broke up on April Fool's Day, so I took it as a joke. I'm willing to humor her for a month. Every day I buy a can of pineapples with the expiration date of May 1st. Because May likes pineapple and May 1st is my birthday. I told myself if May hasn't come back by the time I bought 30 cans, then our love will expire too. What is interesting about this voiceover is that it could be an internal monologue, but because we get to know that the can is almost expired, this is actually a narration. Without the voiceover, it's still a scene where Cop 223 is searching for a can of pineapple with the date of May 1st and buying it. But the voiceover really romanticizes the moment by connecting different information together and giving COP223 a strong purpose to buy a can of almost expired pineapples. As there's also no other method to explain this purpose and also it sets up the following scenes with the cans of pineapples. There are two off-screen dialogue moments in this movie, but they do connect with each other and another moment where COP223 checks his pager. Account 368. Password, please. Love you for 10,000 years. Your friend in room 702 says happy birthday. Thank you. The page operator is an off screen dialogue as we don't need to see the operator as she isn't that important to be seen. What's more interesting is at both occasions they quickly switch over to a voiceover. On May 1st, 1994, a woman wishes me happy birthday. Now I'll remember her all my life. If memories ever come in a can, I hope that can never expire. If there is a shelf life, I hope it's 10,000 years. This inner monologue is great as it poetically wraps up everything that had happened into a neat ending. The second story is about Police Officer 633 played by Tony Leung, which has a better voiceover as the writing is more poetic by using metaphors to describe something. However, it does start with a bad narration looking at an airplane flying away. On every flight, there is one stewardess you long to seduce. This time last year, at 25,000 feet, I seduced one. The purpose of this narration is actually telling us that we're looking at a flashback in the next scene. However, it isn't really that obvious and honestly it doesn't really work that well. And eventually the audience does pick up that we're looking at a flashback. After that we do get a much better narration from Cop 633 who is playing with an airplane in bed. 
I thought we'd stay together for a long time. Like an airplane with a full tank, able to fly far away. Unexpectedly, midway, the flight changed its destination. It's such a poetic way using a metaphor to say that the stewardess will eventually break up with him for someone else. Though it is a spoiler, but the scene before this all with the chef salad already actually eludes us or informs us that they would break up. But without the voiceover, we still see the doubt on the face of the stewardess. And now to the flooded house scene, which has a very nice monologue. I don't know if I forgot to close the tab or if the home got more emotional. I thought it would be the strongest, but it cried the hardest. If one person cries, you just need to give them a pack of tissues. But when a home cries, you need to do a lot more work. This is also quite poetic as the home is a reflection of himself, still missing the stewardess and crying inside. It's a callback to a previous scene where Cop 633 is talking to different objects in his home, which he is trying to cheer up while he's actually trying to cheer himself up with what he's saying. Even without the voiceovers, this still is an interesting scene of someone dealing with a flooded home. And now to what I've learned from analyzing voiceovers in Chungking Express. Tease the audience with what is going to happen at the start of the story with a narration. But try not to spoil the moment right after the narration. Have footage under the voiceover that tells you a story. Even if people don't understand the voiceover, the image can still be clear what's going to happen. Start your narration as if it's an internal monologue that is connected to what you see on the screen. But end it with information that's only known by the narration. Make the voiceovers poetic, romantic and try to be creative with your wording. Make use of metaphors and analogies so it's more interesting than saying it straightforward. Most important is write voiceovers that add emotion or purpose to the storyline. Only tell something if it's impossible or difficult to show. My name is Shungda and this was my cinema essay about Chunking Express voiceovers.